Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Reef Fish Identification. My name is Ana Sangronis, and I am the Florida Sea Grant Extension Agent in Miami-Dade County. And I'm here today in partnership with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection's Coral Reef Conservation Program. And this is part of their Earth Month learning series. So I'm thrilled to be with you. I look forward to teaching you a little bit of fish and look forward to engaging you, engaging with you for a few minutes when we are all done. Also present is Katie Lizza from the CORAL program. She will be monitoring the chat and also launching some engagement opportunities to try and keep you guys on your toes. So I'm gonna start with just giving a little shameless plug to please follow my social media. If you'd like to learn more about Florida Sea Grant and the University of Florida IFAS Extension Service. Before we get too into the weeds, I'd like to mention that there are tons of great reference books out there that are easily accessible and pretty affordable. And one set of books that I always have with me when doing any sort of work in the field are the Human and Deloach books, which include reef fish, reef coral, and reef creatures. So they're really easy to find. Reef based out of Key Largo sells them and you can also find them on Amazon, but I like to support Reef whenever possible. So if you're looking for a good, easy to use book, definitely check these out. So to start, I'm gonna ask Katie to put a link in the chat box, which should be one of the drop down menus found on the right of your screen. And she's gonna put a link in there that is to a Google slide and this is something new for this year. We're just giving this a try. So if you find it wonderful, if you don't, please don't worry because we're just, we're trying something new. And so what we're going to do is take a little warm up quiz to see how you guys are on your fish ID. And I'm going to ask Katie to launch the first question. You should see four pictures of fish on your screen and they are numbered one through four and we'll give everybody maybe 10 more seconds 15 more seconds to locate the chat box click on that link and open up that google slide which should open in another internet window katie if you've got that poll question up i'm going to ask you to read the question as well as the answers and katie's going to launch four different polls with four sets of fish for you to choose from. So Katie, sure. if you could read the first one, that would be great. Sure, Anna, of course. Um, so what fish is this? Um, please select one. Something blue, blue tang, doctor fish, or dory? And folks, if you're brand new to this, please don't worry. Just go with your first gut instinct. This is just to see how you are coming into this class tonight and then how we finish at the end. So please just give it your best and we don't know who's answering what, so no pressure. All right, Katie, can you go to number two, please? Sure. Okay, so again, what fish is this? Please select one. Blue tang, blue um, damselfish, blue chromis, or brown chromis? All right, Katie, let's go to number three. That's good. Okay, what fish is this? Oh, did I? We're viewing poll results right now. What? Okay. <laughs> Don't know what's happening. Oh, here we go. Launch. Okay, what fish is this? Um, please select one pork fish, Caesar grunt, blue striped grunt, or French grunt. Again, folks, if you're just joining us, give it your best shot. 
and I'm going to copy and paste that link. Oh, Katie, can you put that link one more time in the chat box in case sure. people can't mm -hmm. see it? Before we launch number four. Last question, everybody. All right, I'm going to close this one and then launch number four. Okay, what fish is this? Black grouper, gag grouper, goliath grouper, or something with big lips? All right, everybody, about 20 more seconds. Give it your best guess and submit those polls for us, please. All right, Katie, I think we can close the polls. Okay. And once I get the green light from you that you can see my screen, we will jump right into this. Yes, I can see your screen. All right, here we go, everybody. Thanks for playing. So I'd like to mention first that everything that you're seeing tonight is based off of reefs the Reef Environmental Education Foundation's model for learning and teaching fish identification. And the reason that we're teaching this is because in partnership with Florida's coral program, we are highlighting the floral, excuse me, Florida's coral reef, which starts up here at the St. Lucie Inlet in Martin County and continues for approximately 330 or 350 linear or nautical miles, whichever is your favorite measure of unit throughout the Florida Keys. So in driving distance, that's about 300 miles of reef or roughly the distance from Florida to St. Augustine, excuse me, Miami to St. Augustine. And that's a whole lot of reef and a whole lot of fish. And chances are, if you're on this webinar, you have spent time out in the water, maybe snorkeling or diving along the reef track, or perhaps fishing or walking along a jetty or a boardwalk. And it's really fun to learn different fish species. So we're gonna talk about some different tips and tricks for that. To start, we're gonna talk a little bit about fish anatomy or fish morphology, which is referring specifically to how the body is constructed. And generally speaking, we have the dorsal area, which is the top of the fish opposite of the ventral area or the bottom, anterior, which is the front of the fish, and posterior, which is the mouth. And then the majority of fish share all of these characteristics, a dorsal fin, which you might be familiar with that term because we think of dolphins and whales having dorsal fins. Of course, a mouth, which is how they eat, gill flap covering their gills, which is how they breathe, Pectoral fins, which is on the which are on the side of the body, pelvic fins, which are located underneath the body on the ventral side, the anal fin underneath the side underneath the body of the fish, and lastly the caudal fin or the tail fin at the back of the fish. Now we're going to talk about a couple of different markings that we use to help describe fish's characteristics. First are bars, and bars are simply referring to vertical up and down markings on the fish. And in a lot of cases, common names of fishes will include some of these descriptors in them. Opposite of bars, we have stripes, which are referring to horizontal lines along the fish body. Next are bands which are diagonal lines traveling along the fish's body. We also have spots, which, I mean, hold your horses, guys. Spots are dots on the fish. Ramping that up a notch, we have an oscillated spot, which is simply a spot with a ring around it. And lastly, we have blotches, which are simply groupings of small markings together. I do recognize that I'm going a little bit quickly, everybody. So 
I want to thank you for bearing with me and just remind you that this presentation is being recorded and will be available later. So you can check back in to study up if you find that it's just too difficult to take notes. I'd rather you watch and learn and enjoy. Now, Reef has categorized the majority of the 600 or so species found here in Florida into 12 groups. And tonight we are gonna be focusing specifically on groups one through five. So next week we'll continue with fish part two and that will include groups six through 12. But for tonight, we're just focusing on these five groups, which as you can see, describe how the fish, how their body shape or coloration is. And jumping right into this, we're gonna start with group one which are the discs and ovals colorful fish. So some of these pictures should look a little familiar because you did see one of these in your little quiz a few moments ago. So we're talking first about the, um, here on the left, we have a pair of butterfly fish, which receives its common name because if you were to line them up nose to nose, their outline or silhouette looks like a butterfly. And very often the butterfly fish show a band through the eye and rounded tail fins. And so they're between those, between that rounded tail fin, that's where you get the shape of the butterfly. And then just keep an eye on that band through the eye because we'll talk about why that's important. And then in the angelfish family, they are pretty easily distinguished by their long trailing dorsal fins. And some of them even have a trailing anal fin as well. So we'll look at those more closely right now. All right, we've got, here we are. Group one, we're gonna talk first about those butterfly fishes. This is the banded butterfly fish, which gets its names it gets its name because it has this very distinct band through its eye. And you could probably make the argument that these are bars, and I would not disagree with you, but it's called a banded butterfly fish, not a barred butterfly fish for whatever the reason. And in this case, their common name includes its family and distinctive features. So the family being the butterfly fishes and the distinctive, <clears throat> excuse me, Distinctive feature is that band through the eye. And this, these often are seen swimming in pairs, and that's a pretty good general rule for most butterfly fishes. Something else to keep in mind, I want you to just look, but I'm not gonna give it away yet, is what the stripes around the center of the body look like. And I'm gonna point out a more specific example on the next species. And one, the thing that's very important about the band going through the eye is that this helps deter predation. So this helps keep predators away from the eyes of the fish and gives that fish a chance to escape if that eye is disguised. What happened to my mouse? Okay. All right, now we have the four eye butterfly fish. Again, the family name is included in the common name and it gets its common name from this oscillated spot, that spot with the ring around it, which is called a false eye spot. So if you count one eye here on the right side of the fish, one false eye spot on the rear end, on the posterior end of the fish, the other false eye spot on the left side and the other eye on the right, we've got four eyes. So that's how it gets its common name. And you'll notice there's a little bit of banding through the eye, through its real eye, but a little bit less, remarkably less pronounced than on the banded butterfly fish. And its other distinguishing feature, aside from that false eye spot, are the stripes. If you remember from the banded butterfly fish, the stripes that go along the mid body were more like parallel lines versus these which run on a diagonal upward and outward from its central lateral line or sensory organ. Okay, next up is the spot fin butterfly fish. And this can look at first glance 
pretty similar to the species we just saw, the four eye, but we've got that very distinct band through the eye. And in this case, we've got a spot on its back fin, on the trailing edge of its dorsal fin. So a really prominent white body, yellow fins, the false eye spot back here, and then of course, that black band running through its eye. So just to flash back, here's the four eye butterfly fish, which is pretty much all yellow versus that spot in butterfly fish, which is white with yellow fins. Now we're gonna move into the angelfish family and we're gonna start with the queen of all of them, which is the queen angelfish. And this is an incredibly beautiful fish. All angels have disc-shaped bodies and those trailing dorsal and anal fins. And in this case, the queen angel has this brilliant blue spot right on the front of its head. And in reefs modules, they give a lot of memory clues. And for the queen angel, this beautiful spot is referred to the jewel in the queen's crown. It's a pretty distinctive fish with a blue and white, excuse me, blue and yellow body and all yellow fins. Really gorgeous fish. Now the French angel fish have a black body, but they have yellow scales that are very prominent. And with out of all the fish that we've seen so far, their common name is not related to any particular characteristic. So you've got these black bodies, yellow scales, and then this yellow ring around the eye. And there are a couple of ways you can remember this. The first is to think of rows of gold medal on a uniform of a French general. Or if you tend to resonate more with food-based comparisons, you can think of these as scales that were dipped in French's mustard. Next is the gray angelfish. And this one in comparison to the others that we've seen is pretty simple. It's all gray. It has no real distinguishing features, but you can see right up here, it's got that trailing dorsal fin and then the trailing anal fins under its body. Excuse me, these are the pelvic fins. Here's the anal down here, the anal fin. And one thing I'll, I forgot to mention earlier is that everything that we're looking at tonight are the uh, adult or terminal phases of the fish. There are a pretty good amount of changes throughout a lot of these fish's life cycles in which they change color and we're, for our purposes and to keep it simple, we're only looking at their fully mature adult or terminal phases. The last of the angelfish is the rock beauty. And it's the only angelfish that doesn't actually have angel in its name. You can see a little bit of this trailing edge on its dorsal, a little bit of the trailing under here. It's pretty unmistakable because of its yellow and dark brown or black coloration. And it also has a more rounded tail than the other angelfish. And you can think of the rock beauty as associate its beauty with, uh, with black beauty, if anybody remembers that story from 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Now we are moving to the surgeon fish. We're moving into a different fish family. And what's important to note here is that the surgeons have a single long spine near their tail base. And you can think of this long spine like a surgeon's scalpel. And these fish can actually change color. They can change from a bluish gray to dark brown or get lighter or darker. They also have markings that radiate from their eye. They might have a pale band on the base of their tail, and I think I have an example of that coming up. But, and something else to look for is that, oh, it's in the doctor fish. Sorry, I was getting too excited. I got ahead of myself. So they can have that pale band at the base of their tail right by this surgeon's scalpel. 
And these are herbivores, the sturgeon fisher herbivores, which are important for us here in Florida as grazers. We went from surgeon, now we're getting to a doctor. And the shape and size are very, very similar between these two fish. But doctors are, and I quote, in this case, when I'm talking about fish, doctors are dirty. And by saying that, I'm referring to their sets of bars that they have on their mid body. So they also have that barb in the tail, that scalpel, but doctors have that banding, which they can actually lighten or darken. So sometimes you might not see it at all. Additionally, they have clear, you can see through the tissue of their pectoral fin rays, which can be a little tricky if they're swimming, but this is your first clue that you're looking for are these dark bars. Now, the last one in our surgeon family, we have the tanks. And some of you guys probably remember this from the quiz and maybe you're thinking of finding Nemo, but yes, Dory was an Indo-Pacific blue tang, which are similar, but have some different features than ours here in the tropical Western Atlantic. The barb here is yellow and they have a very prominent blue body and they can look quite similar to the surgeon or the doctor fish, but unlike the surgeon, they don't have those lines radiating from the eye. And here on the bottom is a good example of how this fish changes throughout its life. So you can see that when it's quite a young juvenile, it appears yellow, not to be confused with a yellow tang. <laughs> which is another Indo-Pacific species. So here's our beautiful blue tang and they can form gorgeous large aggregations that swim across the reef. So now normally I like us to be able to shout this all together. So I'm gonna ask you guys in the chat, if you can, just to put what your best guess is if it's not the species. And I'm gonna ask Katie to maybe read out some of those answers to me. If you can just, if you can't guess the species, at least get the guess the family. Is it an angelfish, butterfly fish, or surgeon fish? So Katie, if you're there and you can shout out some answers, that would be great. Yeah, one of the answers is spot fin butterfly fish. That is correct. Nice. How about now? I'm gonna keep it going, I'm gonna keep it going. I'm not seeing any answers. Okay, no worries, no pressure, everybody. I'm seeing surgeon. Surgeon fish, nicely done. This is a rock beauty. Yep, I see a, I see a rock beauty. As Great. Well. Here's the example I was talking about a couple of minutes ago. Here's the barb, here's the white band on the tail. Slightly different coloration than the picture that was in the identification slide. This is an ocean surgeon. Now we've got French angelfish. Banded butterfly fish, blue tang, four eyed butterfly fish, and the queen angelfish. So, hopefully, you guys are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable, at least getting down to the family level, if not the species. All right, we are going on to the next family, which is the silvery group. And as you can imagine, this includes fish that are silver, and that's because this particular coloration helps them blend in with bright, with their primary habitats, either open water or bright sand. And the first of our species is the barjack. These species can actually get a little bit darker while they're feeding. They're opportunistic predators. And this distinctive feature is their bright blue bar, which runs down the length of their body to their tail. And 
that is referred to as their crowbar or sorry not the bright blue but the dark and blue combination that's referred to their as their dark iron crowbar pretty unmistakable especially because they have a very deeply forked tail next up is the great barracuda and if you've ever had an encounter with one of these please tell me about it in the chat these are very curious fish they have a very streamlined body they are known as they are known as what's called lie in wait predators or ambush predators so they are very capable of putting on great bursts of speed they're probably most well known for their very distinctive formidable sharp pointy teeth and they look quite fierce they have a little bit of a bad reputation because they can be very curious and get close to divers but there are no reports of any sort of unprovoked attacks they're just very very curious like a labrador with super sharp teeth underwater pretty unmistakable the last fish in this group are the look downs and these are pretty unmistakable too they've got these long trailing dorsal and anal fins similar to an angel fish but if you were to look at this fish head on at the most it would maybe be two, uh, half an inch or three quarter of an inches wide. They're very skinny and they look like they were swimming in an exhibit and smashed their face on the glass. They've got the very blunt square shaped face. So pretty unmistakable are the look downs. And now we're gonna look at pictures. I'm gonna invite you guys to put your guests in the chat. Fish number one. We had three fish in this group. We had Barracuda, Lookdown, and Barjax. Do we have any any guesses, Katie? Um, no guesses yet. All right. Well, I'm going to give it away. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. This is a Barjax. Next, we've got that blunt head. This is the school of Lookdown. And last but not least, I know everyone is answering and shouting at me from home. This is a great Barracuda. All right, great. Here we go, group three, we're gonna ramp it up. I feel like that one was really easy. So now we're gonna, we're gonna step, it up, step it up a notch. And this group includes those fish that have a sloping head and tapered body. And these are fish families whose members have a, very basic or rudimentary fish-like shape. The grunt family tend to congregate by the reefs and in large groups, whereas snapper, as a general rule, are more solitary creatures. Snapper and grouper might be familiar to some of you. These are very popular reef fish species, especially for recreational, uh, recreational fishing. First up is the French grunt. This is an all yellow fish. This is the only grunt that has diagonal stripes on its side. So you'll notice there are regular stripes, horizontal stripes on the top, but on the side and towards the bottom, we've got diagonal stripes. And those stripes can appear to be blue and gray. It really depends upon their local environment. These tend to be on the small side, usually around six inches. And if this fish were to open its mouth right now, on the inside of its mouth, you would see that it has a red coloration. And one of the memory cues that's used to help remember the French grunt is to think of these designer stripes from Paris. Paris being probably the fashion capital of the world. Next is the blue stripe grunt, and these grow definitely larger, about twice the size than the French grunt. And you'll see that you've got a pretty consistent set of blue, alternating blue and yellow stripes throughout the body. We've got black fins on the dorsal and the tail, and the pectoral, pelvic, and anal fins are all yellow. And it has very thick lips, a lot thicker than the lips 
of the French grunt. And no teeth that you can see with the naked eye. And I'll, I'll make mention of why that's important shortly. Next is the white grunt, which can grow a little bit bigger. So you see that they're starting to increase in size, which is coincidental actually. But the white grunt is all this, it, its whole body is a yellowish gray. It's pretty drab, except for the blue and yellow stripes on its face. So it has that stripe pattern only on its face and otherwise completely unremarkable. And depending again on local conditions, these blue and yellow stripes might not be all that evident. So you're looking for the sloped head, which is characteristic of the grunt and that bland coloration to help distinguish the white grunt from other species. Here we have the pork fish, which is also in the grunt family. It's one of my favorites. And it's got the yellow and bluish gray stripes alternating, all yellow fins, and then hard to mistake, no one, none of the other grunts have this, but these two vertical bands, one going through its eye and the other right behind its gill cover. So it's pretty hard to mistake otherwise. If you were to put your hand over your screen, and cover the front half of that body. This fish could be other ones, but if you take your hand away and look at that face with the two vertical bands, it's pretty unmistakable. All right, here we have the gray snapper. This also, this is referred to as the mangrove snapper. And at one point that was its common name, but gray snapper just helped me remember that. And on this fish, you can actually see it has canines that stick out. So that's one way to take a look at it. Its body is grayish, bland, but something that's interesting about this fish is that it has a band over its eye that it can turn on and off. So it's not here in this particular picture, but it does have that capability, which of course, it can be used as a defense mechanism. And so you'll see these frequently in shallow areas or along mangrove shorelines and also along the reef tract. Now we have the schoolmaster, which is out of the ones we've discussed, the only, only snapper species that doesn't have the word snapper in its common name. And this fish looks quite similar to the mangrove snapper, but it has all yellow fins. And again, prominent canine teeth here. And the schoolmaster has alternating yellow and white bars. And those actually can fade with age. And one way to help you remember the schoolmaster is to think about all of those yellow fins and think about a yellow school bus. So yellow fins, yellow school bus for the schoolmaster snapper. If you've ever gone to a seafood restaurant and had a grilled snapper sandwich or a grilled snapper blackened snapper dish, that's this one, that's this fish. This snapper, the yellowtail snapper is one of our most important commercial fish species. And it's pretty unmistakable. It's a little bit more streamlined than the other snappers that we've looked at, a little more torpedo shaped. And it has a, its distinguishing feature is this yellow stripe that runs through its eye all the way connecting to the yellow tail. So these are really opportunistic fish. If you ever get up, if you ever go on a tour boat, and go snorkeling, as soon as your tour boat pulls up to your spot, you're gonna have a whole bunch of yellowtail coming to hang out and see if it's uh, if there's free food. Normally a, a deeply forked tail like this would be indicative of an herbivore or a plankton picker, but as I said, these are they're non-discriminating feeders. So they'll they'll eat whatever you throw at them, literally. All right, we've got our final review of the sloped heads and tapered bodies group.
Here we've got not a French grunt, but a blue stripe grunt. This is a mangrove snapper. Here is a French grunt. This is a schoolmaster. Yellowtail snapper, delicious in a sandwich. And last but not least, the porkfish. And I just realized that there was no white grunt in this. So I'm sorry, guys. I know you feel, probably feel shafted that you didn't get to guess on the white grunt, but don't worry if you're back next week, I'll throw one into the mix just to keep things fresh. Next up is the small ovals group. So the damselfishes and hamlets. So within the damselfish family, we are looking at the chromies. This is a brown chromies. Sometimes I mistakenly call it a gray chromies, which the, uh, the data entry people don't like, but I always fix it just because it looks a little more blah than brown. It looks a little drab. And these are small fish. It's a little hard to tell and visualize that from this photo because there's nothing really to give it a sense of scale. But these are fish that are three to four inches at the very most. And as I was saying with the, the yellowtail snapper a couple of minutes ago, this deeply forked tail is a representative characteristic of a plankton picker. So you'll see these fish in large groups hanging out in the water column above the reef, eating their food, and then they'll go back down and hang out in the reef if they feel like there is a predator nearby. So memorize this brown chromies and just flip the color and flip it to this gorgeous indigo or royal blue color and we have the brown, the blue chromies. So pretty much identical to the brown chromies in terms of body shape and size. However, the blue chromies has this very distinctive black bar, or excuse me, black stripe that runs the length of its body, including onto its tail fin. So these plankton pickers also feed in large groups and they feed on high concentrations of zooplankton. And they're not shy, but they might not be the first fish that comes up to greet you right away. Now we've got one of the damsel fishes, the bicolor damsel fish, which is when we do fish surveys, there's never a shortage of these guys. These are the, the probably the most common damsel fish that we have here in Florida. And they get that common name because of its their two-tone coloration. So black and white, sometimes it'll look a little more brown. And if you don't know anything about damsel fish, they can be very territorial. They can establish these little algae gardens and then they defend their algae gardens even to predators that are 4,000 times their size like human beings. So these are also herbivores and they'll feed on plankton that moves through the water as well. The yellowtail damselfish is substantially larger than the bicolor damselfish. Uh, that bicolor damselfish will get maybe four inches long at the very largest, and that, that's a really large bicolor damselfish. So this yellowtail damselfish can grow up to a little bit over a half a foot long. They're not nearly as aggressive as the bicolor damselfish. And in addition to having uh, like this brownish yellowish body, it'll have iridescent blue flecks and a very prominent yellow tail fin. They can change their forebody coloration a little bit, but that yellow tail doesn't change. And you'll usually see indicators of those iridescent blue spots up on the, the top, the ventral, excuse me, the uh, dorsal part of their body. Now we have the uh, Sergeant Major, which is one of the larger damselfishes. These can get up to six inches long. And because they like to eat everything, they are pretty fat and happy, just to, to call it what it is. And they're also really abundant. There are a lot of them. And they get that common name from their very prominent 
um, what's the word, bars on their body, which you can think of looking like a uniform, like they're wearing a uniform. And in a lot of areas, the sergeant majors will actually challenge the bicolor damsel as being the prominent, the most prominent or abundant damselfish in the area. And these are fish that if they think that you are encroaching on their territory, will not just come up to you, but will actually bite your fins, bite your mask, and tell you to get away, particularly if it's their nesting season and they've laid eggs. So never a dull moment with these guys around. Again, this picture makes it look very big, but we're talking an average of four to five inches in length. And the last fish family in this group is the hamlet. And this is the barred hamlet. This is another smaller fish, three to four inch length at the most. And they're actually a very small, small palm sized member of the sea bass family. So if we really wanna get crazy with the taxonomy, you could go down a, you could go down a rabbit hole. And it's included in this group because of its relative size and shape to damselfish. And in this case, the barred hamlet, it gets its common name from that very prominent brown bar on the middle of its body, and can also be easily recognized by these very gorgeous iridescent blue lines and dots on its face. And the difference, one of the major differences between damselfish and hamlets is that while damselfish are herbivores, Hamlets are carnivores, and if you get a chance to view them or observe them underwater, you'll see that they have really large mouths, which is indicative of them eating larger prey items versus algae or plankton. All right, here comes our review. First up, we have the yellow-tailed damselfish. Now we've got those little little guys that like to come up and say hello, but not always the neighborhood welcome wagon, the Sergeant Major. This is the Bard Hamlet. Now we've got the bicolor damselfish. The blue chromis or chromis. And lastly, the brown chromis. So those last two are quite similar. Now, if you can believe it, we're moving into our fifth and final group of the night, which are the fish that fall into the heavy bodies and large lips group. So we're looking specifically here at groupers. And the first grouper that we're gonna discuss is a pretty wonderful species. It's actually prohibited in Florida because it was, it was pretty heavily overfished. And this is characterized by diagonal bands on the face and bars on the body. And it can change color a little bit. These bars can lighten and darken, but what really makes the Nassau grouper unmistakable is this spot or splotch right back here towards the tail. This area where the body connects to the tail is called the caudal peduncle. If you wanna have something fun to say at dinner, you've got that black spot on the caudal peduncle. And these are pretty shy. They will hover and watch you and hang out. Again, not allowed to be fished in Florida. And for this fish, one of the memory cues that's probably that's helped me remember it the best is thinking of ride the saddle spot back to Nassau. So that saddle spot is your giveaway for the Nassau grouper. This is the tiger grouper. And these are definitely smaller, a little bit smaller than the Nassau grouper. And the younger fish, the smaller fish will have a more yellowish tint to them. And these are often found in cleaning stations where you might find smaller fish that are hovering around their mouths or on their body to pick parasites off of them. Similar to the Nassau grouper, these bars 
can change color to help them camouflage or especially if they feel like they are under if they're being stressed so if you count carefully you've got nine broad bands or bars along the body and those bars are made up of spots so it's funny because it's tigers it's stripes but there are spots in the party as well This is the graze bee, which colloquially has been referred to as the strawberry grouper. But if you were to look up the fishing regulations for this fish, you would not find strawberry grouper in the fishing regulations list. So it's a graze bee and it's got that same body shape as the other groupers, but definitely smaller. These can get to about a foot long at the very most. And the body is a dark olive green with reddish spots so it can look a little bit different depending on what depth you are swimming or diving in and what you're looking for in addition to these spots are the set of three to five black or white dots right under the dorsal fin and they can actually change the color of those spots too it's got a pretty wide rounded broom tail and its other fins are pretty rounded also Next up is the black grouper. And I jokingly refer to this as the white grouper or the gray grouper because it's not really all black. You can see that it's got this marbled coloration and it can lighten or darken as well. In fact, the majority of the time I see these, they're almost entirely pale or white, but you can't mistake the dark edges of their tail and they've got black on all of their fins. Most commonly, if the fish is happy, not feeling stressed, you'll see these wide checkered patterns. So these wide squares or rectangle along their body. They are very, very shy. Usually if you're seeing one in Florida, it's because you're seeing it swimming away from you because as soon as they see anybody in the water, they're, they're finding their way to shelter. Now, the opposite end of that shy factor is the red grouper or the Labradors of the sea or the divers grouper. And those get the nickname because they are very, very comfortable approaching people. So they'll come up to you, they'll check you out, they'll hang out with you. And the, it gets the common name from the reddish brown color that dominates their body. They can also change their body a little bit in these, these white splotches can be more noticeable or less noticeable depending on how it's changed. The red grouper looks quite similar to the Nassau grouper, but lacks that black saddle splotch. Saddle splotch. It can grow, not only does it look similar, its body shape and size is extremely similar to the Nassau. So if you're looking at a fish and you think it's a Nassau, definitely look more closely right here at that caudal peduncle because the red grouper will not have that saddle splotch. And lastly, saving the best for last, we have the Goliath grouper, and it gets its common name because it is the largest reef fish in the tropical Western Atlantic. And I love the picture on the lower right because it gives you a great sense of scale for just how large they can get. They can grow up to about seven or eight feet or seven or 800 pounds. So very formidable underwater, but they really are not interested in people. They will look at you, they will give you the side eye, but not at all interested in what you are doing. These were prohibited from fishing in Florida since 1992, but actually that just changed. So the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is looking to open a limited recreational fishery of these species. So be sure to keep your eyes open if that's something you're interested in, so that way you can be up to speed on what those regulations entail. So now we're gonna have our final grouper review. So guys, I'm gonna ask you to type into the chat box what you think you are looking at. So Katie, if anyone is 
giving any answers, I would love to know what they are. Okay, I'll let you know. So fish number one, it is in the grouper family. I think this chat box is kind of difficult. A Goliath grouper. Yes, great job. So I can't see the chat box at all. So I have no idea who said it, <laughs> great job. All right, next grouper. I will give you a hint, it's not black. Red grouper. It is a red grouper. <laughs> All right, next grouper. Not it's a black. A grouper. It's a what? Tiger grouper? Yeah, it's a tiger grouper. All right, this is not a red, this is not a NASA, and it's not a Goliath. If you guessed black grouper, you are correct. <laughs> this looks a little similar to a tiger grouper, but doesn't have those bars. And its tail is more rounded or paddle shaped than the tiger grouper. Colloquial name, strawberry grouper. If you guessed Graysby, you are correct. All right, last grouper on the review. You're looking right here. And if you said, ride the saddle back to NASA and you said NASA grouper, you got it. Okay, now I have this picture up and I just wanted to ask you guys in the chat to try and identify any fish that you recognize based upon what was presented tonight. So give whatever guesses, I'll give it a minute or so, just whatever you can recognize. I will tell you that we talked about this one in the upper left. We talked about this on the left, about middle of the screen. This one here, just underneath it. And this one here as well. I think I actually circled them. Oops. Sorry, ignore this one. That's for next week. Can anybody guess as to these two that were that I'm circling right now? This one is my favorite in the grunt family. This one on the left, the circle on the left. Uh, Chuck Brown guessed pork fish. Ah, yeah. hey Chuck, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Katie, were you saying something else? Yeah, he, I think he guessed a bunch of them. Um, Yellowtail snapper, Sergeant Major, yes. and gray snapper. Yes, so up here, there's a yellowtail snapper. Hiding out right here is a sergeant major, and then here on the right is a mangrove gray snapper. Sorry, I keep, I always want to call it mangroves. So I'm actually going to pass this one real quick, or I won't pass it, but we'll call out the ones that are circled. Up here, it's a little hard because the scale makes it look a little funky, but this is, are things coming in the chat, Katie? Um, I'm not seeing anything yet. So up here, we've got a brown chromie. Just underneath it, we have a white grunt. This is a French grunt. And over here on the right is a blue stripe grunt. The one on the bottom we'll go over next week. So before we wrap things up, I just wanted to give another shameless plug for a webinar series that I co-host with my colleagues at Miami-Dade County. 
It's the second Wednesday of every month, and these are webinars that include topics that are environmentally themed and relevant to South Florida. So I invite you to email me or write me or however you want to if you're interested in finding out more information. They are free, and it's a nice thing to listen to while you're cooking or eating your dinner. Now, lastly, I'm going to ask Katie one more time if you all will go back to that link, or Katie, will you also please put the link in the chat box? I'm going to ask everyone to visit the Google slide that Katie is putting the link to in the chat box. And then Katie is going to launch the same poll questions and see how you did in working on your fish ID. So Katie, when you're ready to launch the, it's, the poll. Uh, Anna, it's not really letting me, it's giving me all the results to share. Oh, go, to, go to the second number one. Remember how there were two number ones? Yeah, it's not, those aren't there anymore. They're all closed oh. out. It's like, hmm. Okay, well, never mind. Then what we'll do is we'll just go over the answers all together. So if you folks want to visit that link and just keep it open on your screen, if you can, we'll go over the answers. So number one was a blue tang. So hopefully, so I know Dory was a tempting choice, but number one was a blue tang. Number two was a blue chromies. Number three is a French grunt. And lastly, number four was a black grouper. So how did you guys do? Tell me in the chat. How was it? How'd you do on the first one? Were you close? Did you get one of them? I'm just curious. Chuck said four out of four. Okay, go Chuck. <laughs> go Chuck. Great. So cool. Well, before we close out, everyone, I want to thank you again. And I, I always like finishing with a little joke. And so I wanted to ask you guys, why did the fish blush? Oops, because it saw the ocean's bottom. <laughs> I like little, I like cheesy jokes. It makes me happy. And I hope you all appreciate it as well. So by all means, I'm going to ask Katie to throw my email in the chat and I'm happy to stay on for a few more minutes to answer questions. So Katie, there are also other classes going on for DEP's Earth Month sessions. So every Tuesday and Thursday night through the month of April at 6 p.m. there are these free webinars. I will be back one week from today with Fish ID Part 2. And Katie, if you have the link available to put in the chat also with the schedule and registration links for the classes, I'm sure folks would be interested in getting those. Okay. So